I'm Rosie. I'm really sorry that I can't be there with you at the Leadership Summit, but hopefully this is the next best thing. I know that each and every one of you in the room prides yourself on excellence. That's why you're part of the Cambridge Group of Clubs, and that's why each of you excels in your respective fields. So I might not be a health professional, but I'm a fellow individual who constantly strives for more, struggles along the way, and who has an experience in a parallel world. I want to start by getting you to think about something you have achieved. Think about that moment you realized you reached your goal. And think about everything that it took to get there. Something I've realized is that feeling you get, that satisfaction you get when you finally attain an achievement, isn't because of the last step you take, but because of what it represents. I could very easily stand up here and tell you what it felt like on August 4th to stand on top of the podium but that would be missing the most valuable and fulfilling parts of that experience. The most important part of that moment are what you can't watch on TV. I'm talking about the other 98% of the journey where you learn and grow, how you interact with those around you, and how you face each and every day. Those day-to-day -day decisions, interactions, and perspectives are what ultimately shape you. Because the most important moments in your life are not when you ultimately achieve your goal, but all the moments that lead up to it. So I'm here today to share with you stories of overcoming obstacles, facing challenges in a positive way, the importance of the people around you, and the power of perspective. Well, there's been a common theme in both of these experiences, perspective. How you see a situation shapes how you respond, but it also shapes you. Mistakes can be defeating, or they can be an opportunity to learn and to grow. Competitors can be your demise, or they can be your greatest asset. Going into this next part, I want you to think of something going, into, going on in your life. I challenge you to look at it in a different way. Maybe try and see a bigger picture, or look for what that, uh, that experience can give you, no matter how tough it is. Something that helped me deal with nerves as a kid was something that my brother shared with me. At the end of the day, I was putting on a spandex suit and jumping on a trampoline. With this desire, after I qualified for London, I became so scared of the idea of coming forth. I let others degrade my confidence and played a huge role in that myself. I started leaning away from my goal. I lost the motivation to train, and I was letting others train harder. Because of that, my trainings were terrible, which made me question my ability even more. I was going down a really negative path. I wanted to be motivated, I wanted to be happy, but because of that fear of failure, the limits I placed on myself, that glass ceiling, I was giving up before even really trying. There will be people who come into your life who play a critical role in changing the path that you take. And for me, it was my trainer James at the Toronto Athletic Club. I remember one session, we were talking about how training was going at Trampoline, and I shared with him my honest view, that it was shit. We talked about how the comments that Karen and my coach were making were having a huge impact on me. And then he started asking me questions. Do you think you're the best in the world? No. Do you think you can be the best in the world? No. Why not? Those two simple words, why not, actually changed everything. After that session, I sat on the bike teetering between anger and tears. I was so mad at myself for letting the fear of failure get in my way. I was being my own biggest obstacle. Because I was so afraid of not getting what I wanted, I was not focusing on the task at hand, training. My confidence didn't change at that moment, but the perspective that I took did. So I went back to him the next session and told him, maybe I'm not the best in the world today, but I'm going to do everything in my power to get there. There was no guarantee of success. There rarely is. But if you don't have the courage and the willingness to try in a situation where there's no guarantee, that is the biggest failure. The good days are easy. You get this unstoppable momentum. But the bad days, that's when you're really tested. But the bad days are also where you gain an appreciation for what you're trying to accomplish. Sometimes you do need a bit of an external push. And for me, that was a sign. What would China do? When you focus on what you can do each and every day to get closer to your goal, the end goal itself seems less daunting, but focusing on the day-to-day -day helped me remember why I was training, the love and passion I had for trampoline, pushing that edge, living outside my comfort zone. This is what I do, and this is what I live for. I would do it regardless of a chance to win a medal. Yes, that was my goal. I was striving to be the best, 
But when I focused only on that outcome, I lost the joy and desire to push. When I focused on each and every day, I found that passion again. I still faced challenges in the process. Two months before the Olympics, I was having this incredible training. I was jumping high and flipping fast. One turn I was jumping particularly high and I lost a bit of control when I traveled to the end of the trampoline. Usually you can put your feet on the trampoline and roll safely onto the mat. But because of my newfound power, I missed my feet completely and slapped back onto the mat hitting my head. The next turn I tried to get up and try again. But when I was jumping, I realized I had zero spatial awareness. My vision was off and everything was in this haze. Not exactly what you want when you're jumping in the air trying to flip. So a few days later, my doctor, the team doctor confirmed that I had a concussion. I'm not sure how many of you have had a concussion before, but the cure? Sit in a dark room. No activity, no reading, no light, no music, no TV, no phone, nothing. I just sit in a dark room for four days. I just sit in that dark room until I had no symptoms for 24 hours. And that, as an athlete, was probably the biggest challenge because what I could do physically couldn't even come close to the motivation that I had. It was unbelievably frustrating, but I had to keep thinking of how this could benefit me. I was resting while all my competitors were still training. Maybe this would keep me from burning out. When I got back to training, I was still really limited in what I could do, but I could work on smaller technical components that I would never have focused on had I not fallen. I could also bike to keep physically fit, and there was nothing keeping me from staying mentally in the game. With this, what, by the time I got back to full training, the desire I had had never been so strong, and I was technically and mentally a stronger athlete. Keeping a positive perspective kept me looking forward and kept me from feeling defeated. It let me be smart about my recovery, avoiding setbacks further down the road. Through every challenge you face, keeping a positive perspective Embracing the challenges for what they can offer you, sometimes having a little patience, and with the support of everyone around you, you can keep moving forward. There's strength that you can gain from any experience. It was at the last World Cup leading into the Olympic Games when I stood on top of the podium for the first time, I saw the real value in this approach, and I also started believing that anything was possible. When I left for London, I had no idea what that trip would bring, but I did know three things for sure. I was jumping better than ever. I was loving trampoline more than ever. And I was completely satisfied and fulfilled with the preparation. This isn't to say that I wouldn't be upset had I fallen, but I knew that no matter what the outcome was, every second, good and bad, was worth it because I had learned so much through the process. This perspective helped me really become engaged and enjoy the Olympic experience because perspective is a real thing that makes a difference. Waking up on the day of competition is a funny feeling. Through the process, you don't think much beyond August 4th. It basically doesn't exist. So waking up on the day of competition with Karen right next to me, we looked at each other and told each other, today is the day. But regardless of what today brings, tomorrow, in London, the rain will keep falling. Marching into a stadium of 16,000 audience members is a little overwhelming. There's this incredible energy as soon as you walk in. The biggest comfort I had walking into that stadium was my teammate Karen standing right next to me, knowing that we were together the entire way, knowing that we had that unconditional support on that field, we could joke around while others stood alone. On the day of competition, we have one 30 second turn on the competition equipment. I was shaking. Needless to say, my turn did not go very well. But rather than giving me, uh, giving me some last minute tips, my coach just looked at me and laughed and sent me on my way. So after my turn, I went to the side and started going through my routine in my head, visualizing every detail, like I do at every competition. When I opened my eyes, I thought, saw my family sitting right there. In that moment, I was reminded that no matter if I had the meat of my life or fell on my face, Nothing about that would change. My family, my friends, those anchors would never change. My first routine was pretty average. So between our turns, Karen and I went into the back gym to stay warm. When I was jumping on the trampoline in the back, I couldn't help but smile. I was having fun. I was doing the sport that I loved. And knowing that I had done everything that I could, I started to calm. 
When I went back out for my second routine, I was still nervous, but knowing that I was doing what I loved, I was able to focus at the ta on the task at hand, my routine. We complete, both Karen and I completed our second routine, and we both made it into finals back to back. We were literally together until the very end. Going into the finals, I was fourth, and this is probably the best thing that could have happened to me. Because even though we all start from zero, it really showed me that I had absolutely nothing to lose. So I started looking around the stadium, taking everything in, really enjoying the environment. It was because I had held on to that dream that sometimes seemed so big. Because of every obstacle and challenge that shaped me, giving me a positive perspective. Because I was constantly reminded why I was there, the love and passion for my sport and because of the support of everyone around me that kept me focused on the journey. This is what happened.